Marco Anatovic has left, and I'm very, very happy about it. I can't get angry about it at all. Many of you will be aware that I wanted him gone the first time he threw his toys out of the pram. In fact, he didn't even throw his toys out of the pram properly. It's like Marco was in the pram, and his brother Daniel picked the pram up, tipped it upside down, tipped all the toys out, and then they both started stomping on the toys like a couple of angry toddlers. They don't behave in an acceptable way. They're bad ambassadors for the club. And quite frankly, the return on the pitch wasn't that great anyway. We're not talking about Dimitri Payet here. You can't really compare the two. And I'm not talking about the way in which they left. I'm talking about their performances on the pitch. Quite frankly, I don't think Marco Nautovic was fit to lace Dimitri Payet's boots. He was OK and he was actually very good in some games. But they were quite few and far between. His record ain't that great. I think it was 20-odd goals in 60-odd appearances. It's OK. But it doesn't warrant the way he struts his stuff. He puffs out his chest and walks around like he owns the place. But the thing I, I sort of hate most about the whole Arnie saga was the first retraction, the first apology. If you'll remember, after the Wimbledon game, when we got dumped out of the cup, the club announced that they had given him a new five-year contract. I, I thought it was bad news at the time. I think a lot of people did, but but not all. And then they started trotting out the club. All of this, it was propaganda. It was spin. And the thing I hate most about it is that Arnie expected us to believe it. We were meant to swallow it. The whole thing about being apologetic, the, the whole I'm back <laughs> videos, it just sort of sticks in the throat. It has to take us as fools. He sort of trotted out some line as well about... Um, him being offered a better money elsewhere. And that's that's fine to a certain extent. But there was also, just before that, Instagram post from his brother where he was saying he was going abroad because he wanted to win trophies like he'd waited all his life and honestly wanted to win the whatever it's called, the Chinese Premier League, like that was an ambition for him. He was just a mercenary. We know he's a mercenary. And I don't even mind if players are not that loyal to West Ham. But he conducted himself in a very, very poor way. It, it, took us as fools and we were expected to believe it. Let's say, for instance, we were lacking in attacking midfielders and Manchester City were to lend us Phil Foden. It's, it's a hypothetical um, question, uh, but I think we'd get behind him. I think if he came in, we would know it would all be for one season. We would know he'd go back to Man City, but I think we'd all be aware, we'd all be happy enough. We would know that he was just using us as a stopping point and we would progress his career and hopefully it would benefit both parties. So it's not that as West Ham fans, we object to somebody passing through quickly. It's modern day football. We know it's going to happen. But the fact that Anatovic and his brother took us for absolute mugs was appalling behaviour. And... I'm just not sorry to see him go. I think he's pretty much wasting away what's left of his career. I know people will say, well, this is the player that we signed from Stoke. But you look at somebody like that who really has the capacity to be one of, if not the top footballers in the world, but probably the capacity to be one of one of, one of the top 20 footballers in any league he decides to be in. I think he's got enough talent to do that. To decide not to do that, to... Decide not to pursue excellence in your field and just go for the money. It's, I, I think it's quite strange. Wouldn't you want to achieve something? Wouldn't you want some sort of personal gratification? Wouldn't you want some sort? Wouldn't you want to win awards? Wouldn't you want to win trophies? Because that's not the same. Surely you want to win Serie A. You want to win the Premier League. You, if you're a, an individual player, you want to go and be in that FIFA team of the year or the Ballon d'Or team of the year or whatever it is. Some level of ambition to make yourself better. The guy doesn't have any. Now, a lot of the arguments when I said this the last time was, and they were all written, you can look at the videos from the out of, uh, for the Anatovich videos before, and a lot of the comments underneath were saying, well, hold on, Gonzo, if somebody offered you three times the wages, wouldn't you do the same? And I hate that argument. I really do. Because what it does, it takes all the detail and it takes all the nuance and the context out of the argument. It's not the same. OK, if somebody offers me three times what I earn, then my wife has not got to drive my kids around in a 10 year old car that keeps breaking down. OK, we can afford to do different things. We can go on holiday. Our lifestyle changes significantly. We go from struggling every month to doing all right and going on holiday and stuff like that. It makes a massive difference. It's not the same to comparing it to somebody that is a millionaire. 
What's it mean if he changes and gets three times more his salary? If he's no longer 120 grand a week and he's on 300 grand a week, what's the difference? Uh, probably the difference between a, a yacht and a jet, I'd imagine. Probably the difference between a Lamborghini and a Ferrari. Probably the difference between eight bedrooms and ten bedrooms. And something like that. It's a ridiculous comparison. And I just wonder why we all have to be taken for fools with this. I like the way that the club have responded to it. I like the fact that there was no thanking Arnie for all his service because, quite frankly, he didn't give any. He used us as a conduit. He used us as a way to better himself whilst, while he was here, giving the bare minimum. This is not a Scott Parker who knew that he would probably leave in the event of relegation but gave everything and one player of the year and gave his heart and soul before he got his move. This guy did the bare minimum. And it just wasn't good enough. So I say good riddance, Arnie. I don't really care who we get in because, quite frankly, I think even if we were left with Javier Hernandez, who probably wants to go, we know he wants to go, I think even if we made him our top striker for next season and played him up front, all the other deals fell through, I think Hernandez would do his best. I think we'd probably get more out of him than we would have got from a sulking, stroppy Arnie for the remainder of the season. Good luck to him in China and because he's going to need it. Actually, I don't mean good luck. I don't, I don't wish him good luck. Why do I say good luck? Bad luck. <laughs> I wish him bad luck in China, actually, because he's not done anything for West Ham. I really don't think so. So, uh, But I'll tell you what, he's going to have problems over there. He really is. He signed a three-year contract. He will not see that out. This is going to happen time and again. And in the end, no one's going to really bother with him. I hope he earns enough in that time to warrant it.